Hey guys, what's up? This is Ryguy Gaming here today, and I am back with the third part of the mini game scripting tutorial. And today, let's just get right into the scripting. So, the first thing we are going to be looking at is the changes that I made to the leaderboard. So go ahead and open up your leaderboard. And if you have not made one yet, I recommend you go and check out the first part of this tutorial where we look at how to make this script. Anyways, so as you can see here, it's pretty much exactly the same. We just added a little bit here at the bottom to set the alive value to false when the player dies. So at the bottom of your leaderboard script, but still inside the player added function, you are going to go ahead and repeat wait until the player dot character is not equal to nil. And what this does is that for every player that joins the game, it's just waiting until their character actually exists in workspace. Because when you play the game multiplayer, sometimes the player will show up in players before their character is in the game and this will throw an error. So this just makes sure that that error doesn't happen. And then all we're doing is setting a new function that when the humanoid dies, the active value is set to false. So now let's go ahead and look at the meet script. Okay, so here we are. And just real quick before we jump into it, after messing around with multiplayer and everything, I actually recommend you uncomment this line and have at least a couple minimum players for your mini games. I will have this script down in this description with this line uncommented and the extra end and added in at the bottom, so don't worry about that. But if you really don't want it, you can just fix it yourself. And so the first thing we changed is we are going to jump down here and we are going to look at the code where we set up the mini game, which is right here. So as you can see, we create a variable which stores our map. Now, let me show you how I have set up this script and where you are going to want to store your maps and your tools and everything. So over here in the Explorer, you will see a service called server storage. Inside of here, you're going to want to create two folders. To create a folder, you click on server storage, you right click, and you go insert object, a menu will pop up, and then you click on folder. Name one mini games and the other tools. Inside the mini games folder, you place all the models that hold your mini game maps. Inside of the tools folder, you place all of your tools. Inside each minigame model, you are going to want spawn locations. These are going to be called spawn and then a number, just one through however many spawns you want. And that will be the way this script will require your folders and everything to be set up for it to work properly. So I'm going to go ahead and close the Explorer and you can just refer reference back to this point in the video if you need to see how I set that up. But anyway, so as you can see here, here is where we load the map into the workspace. So as I said, we are creating a variable that stores a clone of the, well, that stores the map actually, and then we clone it. So we get the map from the server storage right here. So there's our folder, there's our model, and then we clone it and we put it in the workspace. Now, here is where we teleport the players and give them the weapons. So for each of the players, that's our usual for loop, we are going to get the character right there. And if the character is not equal to nil, which it shouldn't be, but that's just to make sure like they didn't die or quit out during this time period from up here to here, this shouldn't break, but it, it's just to catch it if it does, it will get a spawn location for them out of a random number. The second number you are going to want to change to the amount of spawn locations you have. If you remember, I had four, as you can see there. So the, my second number is four. Then it will just move the character to the random spawn location and make sure that your spawns are named the same as mine or else this will not work. It has to be spawn and then the number with no space. The next thing it does is it gets the tools 
and it puts them into the player. So this line you are going to want to copy for every tool and replace classic sword with the name of your tool. And after all the players are teleported and have all their tools, then we just locate their alive variable, their alive boolean variable inside of the player and we set it to true. So then we're just going to wait for the game to end as usual. I am actually going to change mine right here to 10 seconds just so for demonstration purposes, oh, that's 100, to 10. For demonstration purposes, you can change yours to the length of your game in seconds as usual. I did, however, make one change here. If you copy this script from the description, you will get the change. But if you're just trying to type this out yourself, make sure this wait is after this end that closes this for loop. If it's not, it will wait after every single player, which will actually end up making this last a lot longer. So just make sure this wait is outside of this for loop. Next, after the game is over, we are going to remove the game just by simply destroying it. And then we are going to teleport the players back to the spawn point and remove their tools and everything. So this for loop says for every player, get their character just like we did before. If their character is not nil, which means basically if it exists, we're going to move them back to the spawn location or wherever you want to put them. I'm just putting them at the spawn location. Then we get their tools from their backpack. Then for every one of their tools, we destroy them and then we get the tools inside the character just in case they happen to be holding the sword or the tool when the game ends and then we destroy those as well. Now that is actually the end of the mini game itself so this is just if number two was chosen for the mini game so let me scroll down to here and this is the standard game over text we had and then here is where we added to give the players their points and congratulate whoever is left alive and everything. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to set up a string array called survivors and we're just going to leave it blank for right now and then we're going to set up an int value and set it equal to one. We will, I will tell you what these are for in a minute. But then we are just going to make a for loop for each of the players and we are going to check the player's alive value. And if it's equal to true, we are going to add their name to the survivor's um, string array. So that way at the end of the game we can say like congrats to player one, player two, and player three for surviving. Then once we add them to the string array we are going to go ahead and locate their points and we are going to add however many points you want. Here's where you would change, I put a comment here, but here's how you would change how many points they want. One from surviving. If you want each game to reward points separately you are going to have to copy from here to here under where it says under where it says award points and everything you're going to have to copy this section and paste it into each mini game and the game over message so actually it would be more like from here to here and then paste it into each mini game instead of having it underneath here that way you can set the point value different for each mini game now the next thing we're going to do is set up the congratulations message this is kind of under hard to understand so i'm not going to go over t it too much basically what it does is it just creates a string and adds to it every player's name that survived and then it says congratulations to and then it lists out the players for surviving. You can change this message if you want or just delete it altogether. Or if no one survived, if the string array is blank, it will say no one survived. And then it will go back to the usual. You have however long till the 
the rest of the game and then it will count down until the start of the next game and so that's actually the end of the script so I am going to close out of this and then I am going to start a server and show you guys how this all runs in theory so let me go ahead come over here to test the test tab and then I will let's just do two players to keep it easy and I will hit start okay so here we are in the game as, with the server and here we go the w mini game spawn now I'm going to kill this guy just so to show you his name won't show up in the winning list the mini game is going to end okay now the game is over the mini game has removed itself and as you can see it says congratulations to player one only for surviving if player two had survived it well it would say player one player two for surviving and now it's looping to the next game so yeah that pretty much concludes this tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed and have found it helpful if you have any questions please post them down below in the comments or suggestions I love to look at those and if you found this helpful or enjoyable please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for future content and I will catch you guys later. See ya. Bye.